Notice of On War. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Timothy Ferguson. On War by Karl von Clausewitz. Translated by Colonel J. J. Graham. Notice. I look upon the first six books of which a fair copy has now been made as only a mass which is still in a manner without form, and which has yet to again be revised. In this revision the two kinds of war will everywhere be kept more distinctly in view, by which all ideas will acquire a clearer meaning, a more precise direction, and a closer application. The two kinds of war are, first, those in which the object is the overthrow of the enemy, whether it be that we aim at his destruction, politically or merely at disarming him and forcing him to conclude peace on our terms, and next, those in which our object is merely to make some conquests on the frontiers of his country, either for the purpose of retaining them permanently, or of turning them to account as matter for exchange in the settlement of a peace. Transition from one kind to the other must certainly continue to exist, but the completely different nature of the tendencies of the two must everywhere appear, and must separate from each other things which are incompatible. Besides establishing this real difference in wars, another practically necessary point of view must be at the same time established, which is that war is only a continuation of state policy by other means. This point of view being adhered to everywhere will introduce much more unity into the consideration of the subject, and things will be more easily disentangled from each other. Although the chief application of this point of view does not commence until we get to the eighth book, still it must be completely developed in the first book, and also lend assistance through the revision of the first six books. Through such a revision the first six books will get rid of a good deal of dross. Many rents and chasms will be closed up, and much that is of a general nature will be transformed into distinct conceptions and forms. The seventh book on attack, for the different chapters of which sketches are already made, is to be considered a reflection of the sixth, and must be completed at once according to the above-mentioned more distinct points of view, so that it will require no fresh revision, but rather may serve as a model in the revision of the first six books. For the eighth book, on the plan of a war, that is, the organization of a whole war in general, several chapters are designed but they are not at all to be regarded as real materials, they are merely a track roughly cleared as it were through the mass, in order by means to ascertain the points of most importance. They have answered this object, and I propose on finishing the seventh book to proceed at once to the working out of the eighth, where the two points of view above mentioned will be chiefly affirmed, by which everything will be simplified, and at the same time have a spirit breathed into it. I hope in this book to iron out many creases in the heads of strategists and statesmen, and at least to show the object of action and the real point to be considered in war. Now, when I have brought my ideas clearly out by finishing this eighth book and have properly established the leading features of war, it will be easier for me to carry the spirit of these ideas into the first six books, and to make these same features show themselves everywhere. Therefore, I shall defer till then the revision of the first six books. Should the work be interrupted by my death, then what is found can only be called a mass of conceptions not brought into form. But as these are open to endless misconceptions, they will doubtless give rise to a number of crude criticisms. For in these things, everyone thinks when he takes up his pen that whatever comes into his head is worth saying in printing, and quite as incontrovertible as that twice two make four. If such a one would take the pains, as I have done, to think over the subject for years, and to compare his ideas with military history, he would certainly be a little more guarded in his criticism. Still, notwithstanding this imperfect form, I believe that an impartial reader thirsting for truth and conviction will rightly appreciate in the first six books the fruits of several years' reflection, and a diligent study of war, and that, perhaps, he will find in them some leading ideas, which may bring about a revolution in the theory of war. Berlin, 10th of July, 1827. Besides this notice, among the papers left, the following unfinished memorandum was found, which appears to be of very recent date. 
the manuscript on the conduct of the grand goyeur which will be found after my death in its present state can only be regarded as a collection of materials from which it is intended to construct a theory of war with the greater part i am not yet satisfied and the sixth book is to be looked at as a mere essay i should have completely remodelled it and have tried a different line but the ruling principles which pervade these materials i hold to be the right ones they are the result of a very varied reflection keeping always in view the reality and always bearing in mind what i have learnt by experience and by my intercourse with distinguished soldiers the seventh book is to contain the attack the subjects of which are thrown together in a hasty manner the eighth the plan for a war in which i would have examined war more especially in its political and human aspects the first chapter of the first book is the only one which i consider as completed it will at least serve to show the manner in which i propose to treat the subject throughout the theory of the grand guerre or strategy as it is called is beset with extraordinary difficulties and we may affirm that very few men have clear conceptions of the separate subjects that is conceptions carried up to their full logical conclusions in real action most men are guided merely by the tact of judgment which hits the object more or less accurately according as they possess more or less genius this is the way in which all great generals have acted and therein partly lay their greatness and their genius that they have always hit upon what was right by this tact thus also it will always be in action and so far this tact is amply sufficient but when it is a question of not acting oneself but of convincing others in a consultation then all depends on clear conceptions and demonstrations of the inherent relations and so little progress has been made in this respect that most deliberations are merely a contention of words resting on no firm basis and ending either in every one retaining his own opinion or in a compromise from mutual considerations of respect a middle course really without any value clear ideas on these matters are therefore not wholly useless besides the human mind has a general tendency to clearness and always wants to be consistent with the necessary order of things owing to the great difficulties attending a philosophical construction of the art of war and the many attempts at it that have failed most people have come to the conclusion that such a theory is impossible because it concerns things which no standing law can embrace we should also join in this opinion and give up any attempt at theory were it not that a great number of propositions make themselves evident without any difficulty as for instance that the defensive form with a negative object is the stronger form the attack with the positive object the weaker that great results carry the little ones with them that therefore strategic effects may be referred to certain centres of gravity that a demonstration is a weaker application of force than a real attack that therefore there must be some special reason for resorting to the former that victory consists not merely in the conquest of the field of battle but in the destruction of armed forces physically and morally which can only in general be effected by a pursuit after the battle is gained that successes are always greatest at the point where the victory has been gained that therefore the change from one line and object to another can only be regarded as a necessary evil that a turning movement is only justified by a superiority of numbers generally or by the advantage of our lines of communication and retreat over those of the enemy that flank positions are only justifiable on similar grounds that every attack becomes weaker as it progresses end of notice recording by timothy ferguson gold coast australia